So you want to grow vegetables with a media bed. Well, one of the ways to do that is through the use of something called a bell siphon. In today's video, I want to break down the bell siphon in the most simple way I can and give you guys a few pointers that I've learned along the way. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Ebb and Grow on YouTube, where we're all about aquaponics, hydroponics, and agriculture. Today's episode is all about the bell siphon, which is actually pretty simple. So let's get into the parts. The first thing you should know about beds equipped with a bell siphon is that they constantly fill and drain, fill and drain all day long. All bell siphons are made up of three main parts. First, we've got the standpipe. The function of the standpipe is to control the maximum water height that that bed can achieve. Ideally, you want the top of your standpipe to be one and a half to two and a half inches below the rim of your bed. Water is going to get a little bit higher than the top of the standpipe, but the standpipe is a good guideline for the maximum water height that the bed can achieve. Next, we've got the bell. The bell is a very straightforward piece of equipment. You can see that it's just a larger diameter PVC pipe. It has a cap on the top and it has these slits on the bottom. The function of the slits is to actually break the siphon and therefore your water will drain to the height of the first slit. So whichever of these slits is the highest up, this bell will suck in air when the water drains to that height and it'll effectively break the siphon. And the last basic part is the media guard. You can see this is just an even larger piece of PVC pipe with slits cut in it. The media shield goes over your bell and prevents any media from getting into the bell area and obstructing water flow. So those are the three basic parts of a bell siphon. You can add a few things to make the bell siphon work a little bit better, but right now let's put one together and show you how it works. So I'm gonna be using this bus bin that I got at Dollar General for $2.75. When it comes to the actual container that you're gonna be using for your media bed, you wanna make sure that the walls are rigid enough to hold the weight of media and water, which I was surprised that this one was, but you can see it's not flimsy. I wouldn't recommend plastic or anything for this unless it's like this, like pretty durable plastic. These can be made of wood. Any container that will hold media and water will do the job. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drill a hole for my standpipe. I'm gonna be using a one and seven eighths inch hole saw for that. Definitely a hole saw that you wanna have around because this is the same one that I use for my holes in my rafts for my deep water culture beds too. All right, so now I'm gonna install a bulkhead fitting in that hole. You can also use uniseals and whatnot. I find that these are a little bit easier to use and they work a little bit better. The side with the rubber gasket always goes underwater. So in this case, rubber gasket is gonna go inside. Another good rule with the bulkhead fittings is that you typically only wanna hand tighten these. If you torque them down really hard with channel locks, it can break that gasket. Now I'll install my standpipe, which again is gonna control the maximum water height in this container. So you can see that it, there's a little gap between it and the top. Now simply put my bell over it. And my media shield. Now I'll install my drain. And that's it guys, very, very simple, those three key components. Some people add a few things to make the bell siphon start and stop a little bit better. One of those things is a little reducer coupling. And what they'll do is they'll put this reducer coupling on the top of their standpipe, and this will increase the rate of water that enters the standpipe, which will make the siphon start faster. Another thing I've seen people do is install a breather tube in the bell, which they drill and tap a hole in here, and they put a little breather tube down the side, that will make the siphon stop faster. Neither of those things are necessary. Obviously, this is way easier than installing the breather tube, but let's talk about a few things that you need to know if your siphon is not starting or stopping. So let's get some water flow in this thing. So I've got my hose running into this media bed at about half speed right now. What's gonna happen is as that water goes in, it goes up the bell, and then as soon as it goes down that standpipe, 
that's when the siphon is going to start. One thing you want to make sure you do is always have a valve on the water that's flowing into your media bed because you're going to need to increase or decrease the flow based on what we see here. So you can see water has started to go down my standpipe now. My siphon wants to start, so let's see if it will. And it did. So this water flow is a good speed. When siphons don't start, what's happening is water is entering at the same speed that it's draining. So nothing's gonna happen. If your siphon won't start, you need to increase the rate of water flow into this bed. And it stopped. Now if your siphon won't stop, that means you need to decrease the flow because water's coming in too fast in order for your bell to burp, if you will, and intake air and then break the siphon. So let's, let's listen. Did you hear the burp? And there it goes. So this water flow is a good speed. The siphon is starting and stopping on its own with no worries, no breather tube, no accelerator, nothing fancy. So that's it guys, bell siphons have seemed to become a big part of growing vegetables and aquaponics. They're fun to use and they're really not that complicated. So give it a try yourself, experiment with different size pipe diameters for the bell and the standpipe and see what works for you. Thanks for watching.